Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing safe. So these are the Leon H2, a pair of smart glasses that is built for real-time professional translation. So to that end, the glasses have a series of bi-directional microphones on the glasses that can pick up audio in 360 degrees. And from there, the glasses can do a few things like translate the language that was spoken into another language or just do a direct transcription of the text. So whatever is spoken, you'll be able to see the written text floating in front of you via a heads-up display that's embedded into the lens. Now, I've tested several pair of smart glasses over the past couple of years, like from Holiday, from Even Realities, from Rokit and Rainio. That can do similar things, but the difference with the Leon H2 is that this is designed to be more minimal and less distracting. So to that end, the glasses has no cameras and the UI that you see in the screen, it's relatively simple compared to other smart glasses out there because other smart glasses, they're trying to do like 18 different things. Whereas the Leon H2 is really trying to do three things, translate whatever spoken language to the language that you need or do real-time transcription so you can get live captioning or you can access AI assistant via ChatGPT so you can just tap on the touch bar and ask ChatGPT hey what's the weather today or like hey how far is Hong Kong from Tokyo so the Leon H2 being more single-minded allows the glasses to be more minimal they're definitely not as thick or bulky as some of the recent smart glasses that we've seen from Meta or Ray Neal. And in fact, I think they look very much like a normal pair of glasses. And I love that the micro LED display that's embedded onto the lens is using waveguide technology, but Leon has done a good job of making that waveguide very hard to see, at least compared to other smart glasses that I've worn. Now you can see the square on the lens very clearly, but with the Leon H2, I feel like you really have to come close and maybe look at the lens at a certain angle to see that little prism otherwise from like four or five feet away which is how you normally interact with people i don't think they can tell there's a screen on the lens at all and it helps that the screen is center position so even when i'm reading the text i'm still looking straight ahead this is something that Leon also did on purpose because they found that other smart glasses, the um, screen is a little bit off center. Like for example, the holiday glasses that I tested six months ago, the display was like embedded into the upper part of the frame. So anytime I needed to look at the screen, I would have to do a very exaggerated eye motion that looks in the upper right corner. So anytime I'm doing that, people can tell I'm like looking at something. Whereas these, I can read the text right now, but I'm still looking straight ahead. And because the Hey 2 isn't overly ambitious, it's not trying to do like a hundred different things it can focus on just doing translation and captioning and it does it very well so one of the things i first noticed was that how fast the glasses are able to pick up spoken words and quickly show that on screen in west philadelphia born and raised on the playgrounds where i spent most of my days okay i am testing this recording it looking like it's working pretty well because again, I've tested other smart glasses like the Frame by Brilliance Labs and even Reality's G1. Even though I love how those glasses look, every time I needed to transcribe something or ask AI for help, I would have to wait like five seconds. And that's just way too long to do in the real world. With Leon Hey 2, they've managed to get the latency down to 500 milliseconds or basically half a second. So that means... You know, if I ask AI for a question or if I'm trying to translate something, there's really just like a split second delay before I see the text on the screen, which is fast enough to kind of carry a natural conversation. Okay, so this is going to translate English to Latvian. I know two people from Latvia. They are very, very tall. So my impression of Latvia is just everyone there is tall. I just came back from Japan yesterday and it was freezing. It was very cold. So I was in Japan a few days ago and I, unfortunately I don't really have any Japanese friends so I couldn't find someone to, to demonstrate speaking to me but I would be sitting at coffee shops and there would be Japanese people sitting next to me talking and the glasses would be able to translate whatever they're saying. I can see the words on the screen as they were talking right next to me. So the glasses supports translation and captioning of over 100 languages. So that includes all the obvious ones, obviously, like German, Japanese, Spanish, English, but then also some languages that may usually not get supported, like Somali, Samoan, um, Burmese, and even Cantonese, my native language. And Cantonese is very difficult to transcribe because 
It's a very slang and informal language. And spoken Cantonese is different from written Cantonese. So the fact that the glasses were able to pick up Cantonese, as you can see right here, it's pretty impressive to me. Ooh, the sun just came in. And as I mentioned earlier, there are four microphones on the glasses that pick up bi-directional audio. So 360 degrees. Leon has built a pretty intelligent algorithm that can identify different speakers. So if two different people are speaking, the glasses are able to transcribe in two separate paragraphs to know that like it's a conversation between two people. And because the glasses are so minimal, battery life is also longer. So I, for my testing, I've been able to wear these for up to seven hours on a single charge. Leon on actually advertises up to eight hours but i was able to get seven hours which is still much better than most smart glasses that i've tested which usually, which usually need to charge after like three hours and there's a charging case that's very well built that tops up the glasses up to 10 times because the battery in here it's like over 10 times larger than the battery in the glasses and i love that you don't need a charging cable because the case can just charge the glasses directly when you put it in I love that because I really don't like carrying another separate cable when I travel because I already carry so many like cables and little things, you know? So I just love that. Let's put the glasses in the case and then it charges. I mean, obviously you need a USB-C cable to charge the case, but everybody has a USB-C cable these days. So I'm just glad I don't need to carry a proprietary charging cable just for the glasses. So you can definitely just bring this case of the glasses and know that you can use the glasses for like up to 70 hours with without needing to even charge the case at all. Um, let's look at hardware really quick. So as I mentioned, the display is embedded onto each lens. It's a micro LED display that's plenty sharp. Like I don't see any noticeable pixels. The text looks very crisp and it's very bright that I can even see the text out in sunlight as you can see here. And again, I love that the prism embedded into the lens, it's a little bit more discreet than other glasses that I've tested. The glasses weigh 49 grams, so relatively lightweight. And the arms are connected by a hinge that's spring-loaded. So they're quite comfortable. Like they fit my head perfectly fine. I don't get that little clamp force. And they go out like a little bit wider too. So even if you have a wider head than I do, these should fit your head pretty comfortably. There's only one physical button located at the bottom of the left arm. This is a power button that allows you to manually turn on and off the glasses, or you can tap it to turn on and off the screen. And there's also a touch panel on the right side that supports taps, long presses, and also swipes in four directions, like up, down, left, right. So this is how you would navigate through the UI. So the glasses uses OpenAI's ChatGPT for translation and also the AI assistant and everything goes through Microsoft's cloud service. I think it's called the Azure cloud service. It follows all the US privacy regulations. So if you do worry about that, at least it's like approved by the US government. Now there's a companion app for the glasses, of course. Uh, the companion app's available on iOS and Android. I've been running on Android on my Galaxy Trifold and the app works perfectly fine. So from the app, you can actually control the glasses. Like you can tell the glasses to begin translating or captioning just completely via the app without needing to touch the glasses at all. The app will also save all your recorded translations and captioning so you can go through your history later. Like you want to go back and be like, oh, what did I transcribe a week ago? You can dig back in the app. So yeah, these are Leon Hay 2. If you want a pair of smart glasses that does real-time translation very well, I think these are worth a look. Although I have to admit, I do miss having a camera because when I wear the Roku glasses, I like being able to film hands-free content. But I understand where Leon's coming from with trying to build a more minimal pair of translation glasses. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. It will help me a lot. Thanks for watching.